All right, so as I told you, I was gonna go over some of my camera equipment, the camera equipment that I use to film these videos. So today, right now, that's what I'm gonna do. All right, so the very first thing on the list, we're gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda go from the bottom to the top. Isn't that a song? Bottom to the top, was at the bottom, now I'm at the top, anyway. So I'm gonna go with the smallest camera. Ah, it's broke. Already broke, but I got a new one of these. So I'm gonna go with the smallest camera I got, um, and then work my way up to the camera that you're actually watching me on right now. So this is, these are my, this is my go-to. I got three cameras I like to use. The very first camera is the Canon G7X. So this is just a little point and shoot. It's got a flip up screen. Well, this one used to have a flip up screen. Has a flip up screen. So you can see yourself. These cameras work really, really well as video cameras. Uh, this camera actually works better than my Canon 70D, which is what I've been shooting on for a long time now. This camera here. In low light, the G7X kills it. It is way better than that camera. It's really, in my opinion, this camera is better than that camera in every way except for audio. The only downfall to this camera here is that you can't uh, plug in an external microphone and so the audio is whatever's built into the camera. And it's not too bad, but it's not the best thing. Uh, in the past, I've actually put these little mustache things on the top, try to knock down some of the wind noise. These things are great. If you've done any research on YouTube cameras, you've probably seen somebody recommend one of these. I love it. As you can see, I bought a second one. They're not cheap. I think these things are like 700 bucks brand new. Um, both of these I bought used on eBay. I think I gave around the $400 mark, so you can get, you can get these things for like 400 bucks used and um, so far I haven't had any problems out of a used camera, used G7X. Cross my fingers, I don't. Hopefully I won't drop this one and ruin it. It's funny, this one actually, I took the Fronius and it slid out of my pocket one night. Broke the screen on it. Uh, I looked the screens up and you could buy them like on eBay and I was like, well hell, if you can buy the screens, it must not be hard to replace them. The camera actually still worked. The screen, you could st it still worked. It just had a crack in it. So I ordered a screen, uh, got the screen in, decided to try to fix it, and ended up ruining the camera in the process. So, note to self, don't fix the screen. And now, I've got a new one. That was expensive, expensive learning curve. You can also take these G7X cameras, put them on these Joby Gorilla Pods, they work great for vlogging. You can kind of do the, do this type of thing. You can set it up, you can wrap it around stuff and it'll film you. Um, they have a zoom feature, so you can zoom in and out. And they're small, you slap them right in your pocket. Just got a battery right there. And that's where the memory card goes. So. So this is the first version of the G7X. They actually have a new version out now called the G7X Mark II, I think. And I looked at getting one of those. Uh, they're a little more expensive, and I knew that I liked this version, which I think I'd like the other version as well. The only really difference is that this screen just flips up and down, whereas the other one will go up, but it also has some kind of mechanism in here where you can slide, you can like do it down. So I guess if you wanted to do you know, overhead shots or something, it's got a screen for that. Uh, which I would guess would be a plus. But I knew that I liked these and so I just bought one of these. All right, as I said, the camera that I've been filming with, if you've watched the video on this channel, I don't know, in the last probably two years, it has either been filmed on this one or one of these. Uh, if it's been a travel vlog outside of the shop, most likely it was on one of these. Um, if it was in the shop, it was most likely on this camera here. This is the Canon 
This is the Canon 70D. Uh, they have a new version of this out now called the 80D. I think it does a little bit better in low light, has a couple maybe extra little features, uh, but basically the same camera. This camera is what they call a crop sensor. I'm not gonna really go into that because I don't know that much about it. But basically the sensor that picks up the light that you're filming with is a little bit smaller. It's cropped down smaller. This camera also has a flip out screen on it. it. Does pictures and video. I always use it for video. And then this will take the Canon EF or EFS lenses. Either one. You can buy either lenses. I always buy the cheap ones. Um, I always go with STM lenses, which has a stepper motor versus use a stepper motor to focus versus some other kind of motor that makes noise. And so for filming, because I don't want that thing to be making noise while it's focusing, um, I always use the STM lenses. They seem to be pretty, pretty cheap. The problem is, is they don't, they're not the best lens out there, right? You can't, um, they don't have the really good glass that you find in the L glass lenses for Canon. And uh, without going into super detail, the f-stop, which is basically, I think, the focal eye in there, uh, doesn't get super big. So it can't really take in a bunch of light. So it kind of hurts the camera's performance in low light. But I like them, they're cheap. This lens here is the 10-18. to 18. Really, this is the lens that I always use to vlog with. So I always hold it like this as I'm talking to you guys, or I have it on a you know, tripod or something. Uh, this is a 10 to 18 millimeter, it's perfect for that. It's like 10 millimeters, it's perfect frame distance, I guess is the way to say that. And then you kind of got a little bit of zoom if you need to flip it around and kind of film whatever it is that you're doing. Along with this lens here, this is the EFS lens. Along with that, I also have a 18 to... Eighteen to fifty-five. Eighteen to fifty-five. Same kind of lens. STM lens is the EFS. It's not the greatest lens. Like this lens, I think costs a hundred bucks. But this is kind of bridges the gap between this one. So this one goes ten to eighteen. This is eighteen to fifty-five. It allows me a little more zoom if I'm filming someone else. Uh, this is probably the lens I need to use. Or if I'm trying to get in closer on something I'm working on, I'll use this lens here. Probably use this one like 80% of the time, probably use this one like 20% of the time. Just recently I bought this lens, which is a 50 millimeter lens. So this lens does not have any kind of zoom feature whatsoever. Uh, this lens is stuck at 50 millimeters. The good thing about that though is that you can get the f-stop really low, which means it has a huge focal eye. So you can like see right through that lens and that's because it has a huge focal eye in there gives you that really shallow depth of field. Uh, meaning like whatever you're, whatever you're trying to film, it's only focused on that thing and everything else is blurry. Everything behind it's blurry and everything in front of it's blurry. Really gives you that real good cinematic look. Um, you gotta get the f-stop down there in order to sh shorten that focal length. And those lenses just won't do it. It kind of just puts everything in focus, uh, which is not a bad thing, but I bought this 50 millimeter just so I can get those really artistic shots. Haven't really used it on the channel just yet. Uh, like I said, you're stuck at 50, so you know you have to be a good ways back from whatever you're filming to film it. But it does give you some really, really good shots, and works great in low light. So there you go, 50 millimeter. Now this lens here is just an EF lens. So where these are EFS lenses. This is just an EF lens. Now, the difference between the two, because I didn't even know there was a difference until I bought the camera you're watching me on now, and I didn't have a lens that would work on it. So apparently, when you have a full frame camera, full frame sensor camera, you can only run the EF lenses. The crop censored cameras can run both. And I guess the reason is because the sensor is so big that you need a lens that's going to fill that sensor. And so anyway, the EF lenses, they're a little more expensive. They're only made for the full frame sensor cameras. And you know, the other ones can take both. What I failed to mention is the 
these cameras here, the 70D and the 80D, you can get them both. I think they're seven or 800 bucks for the camera body, brand new. You can get them cheaper than that used. Just kind of give you some reference on pricing. Like I said, I think this lens, the 10 to 18 is probably a $200 lens. The 18 to 55, I think was a hundred bucks. This one, I think was a hundred bucks. So relatively cheap considering. And then the lens I just bought is the 75 to 300. So this is a long zoom lens. I have not used this. I actually just got this like two days ago. This is also an EF lens, but I wanted something I could really get those long shots with, uh, whether it's pictures or even some video. You know, so taking video from a long ways away, I didn't really have a lens that would do that. I had to be right up on whatever it was I was filming. And you don't really get those long, dynamic uh, shots where you kind of have stuff in the foreground before, you're, before you get to what you're focusing on because you have to be right there on it. This should fix it. Like I said, I haven't really used it, but I have it. Um, this thing was super cheap too. It's not the greatest lens. Uh, the f-stop on it's four, the lowest is four, so it doesn't really do the greatest in low light. But I think I paid 75 bucks for it. So there you go. That's pretty much everything I've been filming with for the last two years, minus some of those lenses. The Canon G7X, love it. If I had to have, if I could only have one camera, or if somebody asked me, you know, they're getting into YouTube and they can only purchase one camera, they can only afford one camera, or they only want one camera, what should I get? That's it. This is it. Matter of fact, a lot of people, a lot of your vloggers only use this camera. So like Roman Atwood and uh, Adam LZ, a lot of those guys, this is all they use. They don't have anything else. This is it. Great camera. Uh, recommend this if you had one camera to use. And then the 70D, Canon 70D, I've been using both of those and really just this lens and the 15 to or the 18 to 55 is the two lenses I've been using the last two years. So I've recently just bought the 50 millimeter and the other one. And then I just bought another camera. So the camera you're watching me on is a Canon 6D. And basically the difference between that and this one is it's a full frame camera. It should do way better in low light. Actually should have better footage. I should be able to buy better lenses with it. Uh, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm gonna flip over to the 70D right quick. And uh, you can see the difference and I can show you the other camera. All right, so there you go. That's the 70D on the 10 to 15. Well, the first thing you might notice is that the actual frame is much larger, which I had this one zoomed in. Um, but that's as far zoomed in as this that lens will go. So like I said, 10, 10 to 18 millimeters, you can't really zoom in much. That's it, that's all you got. Zoomed out, you get everything. But you also get that ultra wide angle stuff, which makes the shop look huge. I get that a lot. Anybody that's ever watched the channel and comes by the shop, they're like, man, this thing's not as big as I thought it was. But the secret in that is in the lens. All right, so the last camera, the one I just bought, is the Canon 6D. So this is what they classify as the entry-level full-frame camera that Canon makes. Uh, the camera body itself is about $1,400, $1,500 brand new. Maybe more than that, $1,600, $1,700 brand new for the camera body. Uh, other than that though, it is just like the 70D. Flip out screen, kind of looks the same, feels the same, about the same size, takes the same batteries, same memory cards, all the stuff's the same. Has a couple more features. So this one will do like a time-lapse feature. It also has, it also do 60 frames per second for that slow-mo action. And so, and then obviously because of the sensor size, it should be a lot better quality footage. Better in low light, a lot more crisp and clean. You can probably see the difference in the light right now. Like I haven't changed anything. The lights are the same, but going from this camera to the camera you're watching me on now, you could probably tell a difference in how well it receives the light. Some of that's probably the lens and some of that is the camera. And then the lens itself, this one has a 24 to 105, which is nice because um, it kind of bridges that whole gap. Instead of having two lenses, I just got one. And you think on this one, you're watching me at 10 millimeters to 18 millimeters. You think you'd lose some of that, but you gain some wide angle 
you gain some of the wide angle, angle aspect of a camera and you go to a full frame sensor. I guess because the full frame sensor can take in more so it, cha it actually changes it. So 24 millimeter on a full frame camera versus 24 millimeters on a cropped sensor. Um, it's gonna look like you're zoomed in on the crop sensor versus the full frame, I guess is the best way to explain it. So anyway, that's it. I think this lens on this one was like 500 bucks. So you're looking at what you're watching me on now is probably brand new, I don't know, uh, $800 versus 2000 for something like this. Um, obviously you could probably find both of these used much cheaper, but anyway, there you go. Oh, I got one more thing to show you. So that's all the cameras though. That's all the cameras I've got. The new one, you should see this kind of footage coming out. Things should look a little bit different. I want to try to step up my game just a little bit. Um, now I'm doing these, you know, more and more brand deals with Fronius and some of these other companies. I really want to try to do better quality footage style videos when it calls for it. So obviously I can't do those kind of videos all the time and I don't really want to. I don't want to, uh, I don't want to try to make this any more difficult on myself than it needs to be. My main priority is just to get work done and get out content for you guys. As long as it's pretty good, I'm satisfied with it. I'm not going to like hold it back to try to make it perfect or I'm not going to spend crazy amounts of money to try to make the footage perfect all the time. The main reason for that is, is if I drop a $2,000 camera, it's going to it's going to hurt my heart a little more than say a five or $600 camera. And so I'd rather have two five or $600 cameras versus a $2,000 camera that might get better quality footage, but it's going to kind of keep me from doing what I need to be doing, which is work and creating content. So take that for what it's worth. The last thing I got for the very last thing that I have for you is a gimbal. So gimbals are pretty popular. Um, I've had this one for a while. It is the, I don't even know how to say that, Zahine Crane. Anyway, I've had this thing for a while and I never use it. Uh, it kind of goes right in line with me trying to create better content, but because it takes more to do it, I end up not using it. But this thing works awesome. See, the crane, the crane. So it works just like any other gimbal although it's in a smaller package. Uh, this one is handheld, so you don't have the big, you know, the big heavy bulky equipment. You don't have the huge case. This thing comes in a small case. Handheld, that's it right there. That's all you want. This thing will actually work good with a DSLR. I've used it with a 70D, and it actually works surprisingly well as far as keeping that thing uh, steady. So it's got some adjustments on it. It's got a nice case. You throw the batteries in there. The battery's rechargeable. And then I've got the stand for it. These things actually just flip out so it'll stand up on its own. And what I like to do with this one is I don't actually like to use my DSLRs. I actually always like to use something a little bit lighter. So I'll use the G7X throw it on there. A lot of times when you're doing gimbal work anyway, you're not, you don't really need the greatest audio. Um, it's usually some kind of B-roll or something. And I've already got this thing pretty well balanced. So you just turn it on. And that's it. So you can see, keeps that camera, no matter what I do, it's gonna keep that camera perfectly level. Just get those ultra smooth shots. Uh, at some point I'll probably put like a long pole on this thing. I can do some of those big jib shots. Um, kind of waiting until I get in the new shop. I don't really need to do that here. And uh, I actually, they make a, for this thing, they actually make a crossbar too. So it'll actually cross and you can do the two handed uh, work as well, which I think will actually work a little bit better. Uh, the one problem with one hand is that you, it's kind of awkward where, yeah, anyway, so there you go. The affordable, so there you go, the affordable gimbal. I think this gimbal is like 700 bucks um, and I don't have any issues with it so far. I think everything works awesome. If you was having to like chase a car through 
down the road or through, you know, off road, you're chasing them up a little hill. Uh, whatever you're using it for, this thing would actually get the job done, especially if you're going to use a small camera like this. Like I said, I've used it with DSLRs and it works fine. Uh, the problem with the DSLRs themselves is just the weight on your arm kind of tax, taxing. So, you know, if you can use a smaller camera, that works amazing. Um, I'd as soon do that. And then, really, just that easily, this bad boy packs up in its own case. and she's ready to go. All right guys, there you go, my camera gear. The camera gear that I use right now, I get a lot of questions about this. Um, I actually have links in the description of every video I post. It's at the very bottom, you've probably never seen before, but um, you know, if you wanna go look at any of this stuff, you can just go to the bottom of the description and the links of all my camera gear in there. And so, there you go. Hopefully that answered, I don't know, two questions out there. Anyway, as always, thank you for joining me. I'll see you guys some more this week. Go do work, son.